Hey guys, just want to share with you another article that I thought was pretty good on this uh, debate about the atonement and um, kind of explains the satisfaction theory a little bit more as in contrast to the penal substitution. And I don't know that I agree with all of this, but some of it sounds pretty good. And so I'll just read through this on this website, The Rebel God. It's Anselm versus penal substitution. Anselm's a guy that taught the, or believed in this satisfaction theory. It says Anselm of Canterbury's work, uh, Cured Deus Homo, whatever that is, which translates as why the God man is usually credited with being the first articulation of what would later become the doctrine of penal substitution. However, a closer reading of Anselm indicates that he would have in all likelihood have rejected penal substitution. The first important thing to note is that Anselm, Anselm, Anselmian, Anselmian satisfaction, there is a distinction between satisfaction and punishment. So in satisfaction theory, there's a distinction between satisfaction and punishment. In penal substitution, they are the same. The punishment is what satisfies justice. In Anselmian satisfaction, satisfaction is an alternative to punishment. Satisfaction is what restores honor so that punishment can be averted. And this is probably from the writings of Anselm or in this, uh, this book, his work, whatever that was. The honor taken away must be repaid or punishment must follow. Satisfaction here takes the form of restoration, mending what has been broken, paying back what was taken, etc. If the guilty party is unable to make his rest this restitution, then the only alternative is punishment. The principle is taken from the legal courts of the time where a person would either be required to pay a fine, or if they could not afford it, they would be punished instead. The Anselmian satisfaction, since we cannot or in, in, in satisfaction, I'll just say satisfaction theory or whatever. Since we cannot ourselves make satisfaction and restore God's honor, since even if we, even if we led a perfect life, we would only be giving what is our due, we are headed for punishment. So Christ not only lives a sinless life, which is again his due, but also is willing to endure death for the sake of love. This goes beyond the call of duty and thus honors God. Restoring God's honor, which Anselm saw as the central problem of the atonement. In contrast to this, penal substitution does not see satisfaction and punishment as two separate alternatives, but as the same. It is the punishment that satisfies God. Anselm would have likely agreed that it was appropriate to punish the guilty, and that in the absence of restoration or satisfaction, the punishment was appropriate. That punishment was appropriate. However, he would not have agreed that it was fitting for the innocent son to be punished in order to justify the guilty. What justice is there in his suffering death for the sinner, who was the most just of all men? What man, if he condemned the innocent to free the guilty, would not himself be judged worthy of condemnation? Anselm's answer to, that is, to this is that, God the Father did not treat that man as you seem to suppose, nor put the death, nor put to death the innocent for the guilty. He goes on to say, It seems to me that you do not rightly understand the difference between what he did at the demand of obedience and what he suffered, not demanded by obedience, but inflicted on him because he kept his, per his obedience perfect. In other words, God did not require or take pleasure or satisfaction in Christ's suffering. Rather, Christ suffered because he was obedient to love to the point of suffering and even death. One can think of a firefighter who is wounded going into a burning building, trying to save people from the flames. No one is satisfied that the firefighter was hurt in the fire. What is heroic is that despite the danger and pain, the firefighter went into the inferno for the sake of saving others. Anselm is right to reject condemning the innocent to free the guilty, which penal substitution proposes. However, there are some problems with Anselm's theory as well, the largest of which is that it is rooted in what is called natural law, which means that rather than looking at the revelation of God in Scripture, he instead looks 
to human laws and cultural understandings of what is right and must be, and then imposes this on God. Hmm. And so here's where he becomes critical of it, but... Let's see. I'll just continue to read this. I would like to suggest further that there is a difference between Anselm's natural law of reason, and, and as he calls it, which is based on the cultural assumptions of his time and the arbitrary and artificial human laws on the one hand, and truly natural law on the other hand, based on laws of nature. For instance, when Anselm claims there must either be satisfaction, restitution, or punishment, this is in fact arbitrary. Why must there be? Couldn't I simply decide to forgive instead? This was the argument of Socinus, and it is a compelling one. In cases of human reaction, the two options Anselm gives are not the only ones available. What happens if we think, if this is in terms not of artificial human law, but in terms of natural sickness? And the statement becomes that either the wound is treated, satisfaction, or it will fester, punishment. Either the sickness is cured, satisfaction, or will result in death, punishment. Here we have a model that makes more sense than a legal one. There is no third option of simply ignoring the sickness in the act of mercy. Instead, being a passive non-action of not punishing becomes here active healing. Uh, whoever, or further, the satisfaction does not seem to be appealing to vanity or vengeance, but simply solving a real problem, and the punishment, again, is not arbitrary, so we can ask why not just forgive, but is natural consequence. Sickness, if untreated, leads to death. In Anselm's theory, Christ needed to first restore God's honor before God could show us favor. In penal substitution, Christ had to first be punished before God could show us favor. In a medical view, however, the act of the physician is an act of favor. The problem is not with God, but with us. We are the ones who need to be reconciled. We need to be fixed, not God. Again, to apply Anselm's argument here, Christ does not suffer in order to appease or satisfy God, but rather God in Christ loves us so much that he enters into our world of sickness, coming to heal and restore us, and then loves us to the point of making himself subject to our sickness. He takes his sickness upon himself, and here I'm leaving Anselm and adding in Christ, Christus Victor, and overcomes it, thus setting us free from its hold. So, he has some different views there, but I thought it was kind of interesting how he describes some of the, the, the contrast between satisfaction and penal substitution. Basically, at the beginning of this here, how satisfaction has the distinction between satisfaction and punishment, and penal substitution, they're the same. The punishment is what satisfies justice. So it's a lot to take in, but um, I think there all are better alternatives to the penal substitution atonement theory, because uh, it just doesn't seem to line up with me. But that's it. Thank you.